Okay, now we're going to go on to slightly more complicated structures. The next group of silicates are called chain silicates or inosilicates. Or chain silicates. And they are as uh, you'd expect them to be. They're elongated in one direction. That's normally the C axis goes this way of the mineral. And we can write out uh, one of these. There's the C axis. And here is the silica tetrahedra, like that. The next one on the opposite side of the chain, like that. And the next one farther up, like this. Okay. And if we pick a repeat distance from, say, here uh, to up here, you can count there are two, one ox silica here, one silica there. So two silicas, two, one, two, three, four, five, six oxygens. So the stoichiometry is one to three silica to oxygen. An example of this would be um, pyroxenes, which are the common simple single-chain uh, inosilicates. And uh, enstatite would look like this, MgSiO3. Or if we picked uh, diopside, it would look like this, CaMgSi2O6. Okay. All right, so this is single chain. And now we're going to look at what happens when we have a double chain. Inosilicates. Again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to draw this um, tetrahedral chain like that. There's the next tetrahedron, like that, and the next one like that, etc. And now we're going to share this oxygen with another tetrahedral chain over here. Okay like that. And like so. And this double chain is again elongated along the C axis in in a group of minerals that are called double chain. And the common double chain silicates are amphiboles. Okay? So the repeat distance, again, would be from here to there. And we can count, again, there are one, two, three, four silicas, four silica. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven oxygens. Okay, so amphiboles that are double chain silicates always have this stoichiometry of 1, um, 4 to 11. So a common amphibole would be uh, tremolite, which has a formula Ca2Mg5, Si8, O22, OH, twice. Okay? All right. Now we're going to uh, turn to uh, slightly more complicated and linked chains. You can see what's been happening as the number of silica tetrahedra that are linked increases, then the silica to oxygen ratio decreases. Okay, now we're going to look at ring silicates. And ring silicates are quite simple. Uh, they look like the same sort of linking. We start with a, a chain like of tetrahedra here. And then we don't link anything up up here or down there, but we link this tetrahedra to one over here, like that, like that. And put in this, the tetrahedral symbols. This is a six-membered ring. Virtually all the uh, ring structures in the Earth are six-membered rings. And it's easy to count the number of silicons here. Six silicons, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and six 
silica, and the number of oxygens, there's one that's shared on each of the rings here. There's six of those, and then there's two more out here. So it's three times six, so there are 18 oxygens. So these would be called ring silicates. And common ones include beryl and tourmaline. And beryl is an example shown here is Al2Be3 Si6O18. And you can see this has the same 1 to 3 ratio of silica to oxygen as the inosilicate pyroxene group.